Hello, my name is Irko. Welcome to Bias Recording Studios in Springfield, Virginia, which is right outside of DC. And there is no better place to have some fun with GoGo. Working as a freelance audio engineer in commercial recording studios means that my best friend is the main assistant engineer. In this case, Brian helped me big time with everything, starting with selecting the microphones. So of course, we're going through the mic closet and figuring out what's the best microphones that they have for what I'm going to record. The first thing that I do when walking into a new recording studio is to check out the acoustics of the control room. So here I am playing my mixes to kind of figure out how much bass, how much high we have in the room, how stereo it is, kind of get a feel of the perspective of the control room. Once Brian is done with setting up the microphones for the drums, he gave me a sheet right there, you see it on the left. It's a spreadsheet of the microphones and the tie lines that have been used. So I'm putting down that same information on the console so that I know which channel is which. I use two microphones for the kick, one inside, one out, snare top, snare bottom, two overheads, one for the hi-hat, one for each tom, and then two omni for the room. This is the actual microphone selection. Beta 52, TLM, 441, 421, KM84, U87, and then the Omnis. This console is a split console. So the left side is the preamp section. It's what's pushing the microphones in the live room. On the right side is return. So it's what's coming back from Pro Tools. So I'm putting down the same information to the console on that super fancy pink tape. Look at that. There's Anthony, second assistant engineer at the studio. Brian set down the microphones in general positions and here I am trying to place them into the definite ones. The microphone you see outside of the kick drum is actually not the one that we ended up using because it died on us. Having a drummer show me how he's gonna play the drums while I'm setting up the mics helps a lot. What is this crazy guy doing with the tape measure? I am trying to make sure that the overheads are in phase with the center of the snare drum. That way I have a very nice stereo presentation. It's very wide, but at the same time it's mono-compatible. Look at that, run! Time for the timbales. This is one of the signature sounds of go, go music. What I was trying to do was something that could be stereo, but also mono compatible. So a mid side setup is ideal. We have a 49 for the mid and the 89 for the sides. It's really important to see the drummer play because I don't want to place microphones in a good position for audio, but a bad position for the drummer to perform, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm not in the way of any of his movements. This is the point in which we found that one of the microphones was not behaving well. Okay, we got bass, very nice. I have not compressed any of the microphones, but the bass, hey, how can I give up that option, right? Here I'm checking all the microphones and mostly the snare bottom was a little crooked, so I had to make sure I had it in line. It took us a couple of hours to get to this point with setup for everything. The producer is in the building. We got Love right there on the right. Everybody ready? He has the remote control so that he can talk to everybody. Right now we'll beat it. And then there's this uh, funny recording engineer playing the air drums. When the whole band is playing together, they feed off of each other's energy. So usually the levels are hotter. There's more signal that's coming from the booths. So you will see me often touching the left side of the console to adjust that. We're gonna beat. Man, let me tell you, that bass, oh, so rich. I think the, the fundamental was around 45 or 50 hertz or something. So good, man, so good. We have the original producer for the track. What a machine, man. This guy was just killing it on the drums. Okay, can you please appreciate the levels on these tracks? Look at those things. And look at the dynamics too. Like once the guy starts, he started, man. He's rock solid. 
And now we're wrapping up one of the takes. Boom. Air drum to the fullest. We laid the main keys part down while recording everybody else in the room. But then we overdubbed some parts on the keys. There's love on his main instrument. Dum, 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 dum. So you see how the timbales is a constant. So I wanted to make sure that the tuning for that was correct. Anthony and Matt spent quite a lot of time to make sure that was the case. Now that the band's tracking is done, it's time to move on to do vocals. I usually do vocals with multiple microphones so that I can have different textures. There is really no way to tell what microphone will sound the best for a performer until you actually try it. We can see now Brian set up everything for Moody to record her vocals. You would expect that a very expensive microphone will sound better on a vocal than another one. Well, that's not always the case. In this case, I actually settled with using the 414, which is at the top, and I used the 47 for the background vocals or the harmonies. Never when I touch my toes, got them coming back. Incredible performer again. Moody did not miss one note. She was just fantastic. He like, uh -oh. I did compress the vocals. 414 on the 1176, that's what I'm setting up now. You see fast attack, fast release, 12 to 1 ratio. For the secondary microphone, I use the 165A. Yeah, I love that thing, man. Actually, the entire rack on the right is just fantastic. Look at the captain. Alan's in the house at this point. He shows up towards the middle of the session, as any executive will do. I think we're ready to track vocals. Yeah. Guitar time. We put the cabinet in one of the small booths over there and Anthony jumped on his Les Paul. When I picture go-go music, I see a show, a concert, right? So what I figured is we needed to recreate the exchange or the interaction between the band and the audience. So I grabbed anybody that I could, including Matt, Anthony, Love, Moody, and Alan, and myself. And we went into the booth to record some A, some reactions, you know, noise and little things like that to kind of have that exchange. We did two takes, one on the left of the room and one on the right of the room, and I didn't move the microphone so that I could use the natural stereo panning of the crowd. After everything is recorded, we go to editing. I do some rough edits at the studio while I have everybody there. After that, Time to fly back to LA for the mix. All microphones were pushed by the juiciness of the API console. So I have all that warmth printed into the tracks. As you can see, I'm mixing the entire track in Pro Tools. So it's a full digital mix, but I'm not scared of that at all because I have all the juiciness from the API to begin with. It takes me about 10 hours or so to mix a record. After I'm happy with the mix and I've done all of my tests, you know, headphones, big speakers and car tests and all that, I sent out the first mix and the producer asked me for a little more bass, a little more of the music, the guitar, the keys and stuff like that. And he wanted me to kill the crowd reaction, which I was a big fan of, but okay, we tried it. So that was the second mix. The tweaks for mix two were to bring up the kick, turn up the little fun sound for the bridge, a little more piano on the hook. And then last round of revisions, the producer asked me to bring back the crowd. Yes! And I was very happy about that. <laughs> and then I turned down a little bit of the super high end, you know, the 15K up. And I brought up the body of the snare. So that was it. After three revisions, here we are with the print of the main mix. Nice and healthy, look at those levels. And we're off to mastering. I usually don't attend mastering sessions. My mastering guys definitely know what they're doing, so I let them do their thing. But here I am sitting right next to Gene, and once he's done, he's letting me hear the result and pretty much A-B between the mix and the master. Of course, the goal is to get a little more volume, but at the same time, we do not want to misrepresent the mix by killing the transients too much and stuff like that. Thumbs up means thumbs up. I think that's a universally accepted sign for, okay, we are done. So that's it. What a fun project, man. This is really good. I do this two to three hundred times every year and I love it. Let's go. Let's go.